All right, so so everyone on Twitter and Facebook, I'm going to just stop the stream and throw it back up so that our people on YouTube can get on. Technical difficulties on my end, error on my part, my fault. So I'm going to stop the stream. Okay. So that our people on YouTube and oh 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 we are back on we are back on oh now we're back okay we are back on I'm gonna stop the stream all right all right yeah just pause just pause your uh I mean pause your sound JLS okay got it good that that was just a little that was just a little summer league uh uh, (laughs) live stream just now a summer league edition. You know what I'm saying? So let, let's yeah. start this over. First and foremost, salute All to everybody right. watching tonight on this late night tilt. CP from Knicks Fan TV, my man JL's from the Nick of Time show. Had a little bit of technical difficulties where we weren't running on YouTube, but we're back now. That's what the Summer League post game show is about, JL, is to get those kinks out. You know yes. what I mean? So get the get the get just get those jumpers out and yeah, uh, and just throw it around, man. Just throw it around. But anyway, Knicks win tonight. We get our first win. We snap a three-game putrid losing streak out there in the desert, one seventeen to ninety-six over the Lakers. Damn Lakers, right. Lakers team looked like roadkill, but you know what? We're gonna overreact tonight because that's why Hell we're yeah. here. Everybody's all star. Everybody was a star. Everybody gets a star. No, but <laughs> in all seriousness, man, um, we saw some some solid stuff from Kevin Knox. From Money Mitch and from RJ as well. Uh, let's start off with your takes on Kevin Knox, man. What would you think about Kev tonight? All right, yeah, so we're going to start off with Kevin Knox since he got the ball rolling today. I'm sorry if you heard me already say this on Twitter <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and Facebook, but this is for the YouTube fellas. All right, Kevin Knox finished off with 25 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1 steal. I really liked how he was able to take advantage of the defense. Um, He was really aggressive the whole Really game. aggressive, really aggressive. Uh, I like the way he went to the hole. He's able to use his body very well and finish through contact. And... Three point shooting is okay too. Two for five. Forty percent from the field. And I know what I also one more thing I'd like to yeah, add. Yeah, good. The the court awareness, I feel like he's been watching a lot of film. Yep. And he just knows where the players are going to be before they get there. So yep. when he's driving into the lane and he has nowhere to go, he's able to make quicker decisions on the offensive end and give the ball to the open man. So I'm really yeah. like I, I, I agree with everything you said there. I think from the start of, of Summer League, we've seen an aggressive Kevin Knox. And we saw that to a lesser extent last Summer League as well. So nothing to get too crazy about. But you just hope he kind of carries that forward into the regular season. I feel yeah. like he's gotten slightly bigger. I agree with what you said in terms of the court awareness, the court vision. You're seeing him not just, you know, force a finish at the rim, but really, you know, making a smart play, making a smart read if he gets into trouble, you know, kind of finding those guys in the corner. He found RJ in the corner for a couple uh, for a couple jumpers. RJ didn't, didn't complete, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I think um, Kev definitely showed some good signs. 25 points tonight, definitely set the tone for the team. So mm-hmm. good, good job by Kev there. On RJ... Hey, listen, another double-double tonight for RJ. He carried it over from last night. Yeah. Uh, I believe he had 21 points, 10 boards tonight for RJ. Both yeah. he and Knox were in straight-up attack mode to the rim. Obviously, with RJ's case, you want to see the jumpers get knocked down, especially the wide-open jumpers. Mm-hmm. You know, still looking a little bit flat, but okay. Hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll continue to work on that and knock those down. But, um, you know, I, and then again in the second half, they, they had him – being more the primary ball handler, even with Kadeem Allen in there. We saw RJ, you know, taking the ball up and kind of facilitating in that regard and just making smart plays. I see him and Mitch kind of starting to develop a little bit of a, uh, chemistry there as well. So, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so pretty, able- pretty sorry, decent man. start for, for RJ, but go ahead. Yeah, man, I like the, the chemistry between him and Mitch, uh, the, the little high pick and roll there. He found Mitch a couple of times with some mismatches. Um, I also see like the Knicks are trying to post him more. They're taking advantage of his kind of bully ball style. Yeah. You know, you don't really see bully bully ball from the shooting guard position, but that's what RJ is right now. He's a bully from the shooting guard position. And you see it from the 21 and 10 he had today. Uh, I, I agree, man. And listen, with him and Knox, man, if they can continue just to be in that full-blown attack mode, finish a bit better at the rim, and, and, and you know, hit those shots, man. I, I like what I what what they could be, man. If they could really 
fulfill that potential. But I think RJ, listen, RJ's settling in a little bit, game by game. He, he, I, clearly, he's been rusty in the mm-hmm. beginning. Hadn't played a, a college game since April. We, we got to give him time, man. There was so much overreactions to the first two games. It was ridiculous. It, it was yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Let, let this kid get in there and, and cook. It's summer league. You got to let him get it, get the rust off. And, and you know, take those chances, and and he's going to the right more. You know, he's working yeah. on his deficiencies in summer league, and I think that's what summer league is about. It's that time to kind of try and experiment on certain things and, and work on your game. Yeah, he told Stephen A. He's right-handed. <laughs> yeah, funnily enough, funnily enough, he did say he was right-handed, which is interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting how he favors left and goes right. Doesn't really go right, but yeah, today he went right a few times. And in order to also think that some people are kind of forcing him to his right because they know he left his, his yeah, strong hand. Yeah, right. But he's been able to finish with, with his right without a problem. And yeah. If he starts with that, then it's, it's going to be dangerous. That's right. Just, so just get the arc on a shot, dog. That's yeah, all he's, yeah, he's just a little bit too flat-footed. Sometimes it doesn't even look like he's jumping. But, you know, like I said, I think the, that's a thing that, that can be fixed. You know, yeah. the, the, jump, the jumper can be fixed. He can work on that, just uh, throwing some shots up and, and working on his form. Um, oh, yeah, that's definitely it. Take, it, it takes some time, though, but, you know, yeah. it'll take some time, but he can definitely fix his jump. Absolutely, man. But, again, you, you like his his attack on the boards. He's using his size out there to his advantage. And and some of his court vision has been on display as well. So, you know, not, nice um, back-to-back games by RJ after the first two struggles. On mm-hmm. Mitch, 13 points, 11 boards, five blocks for money, Mitch. Uh. You know. T- typical game for Mitch. Oh, um, ho oh, hum game. Uh, <laughs> the first play, the first defensive play he made. I mean, he he threw my man stuff like it was a playground basketball, like it was yeah, a tennis ball. It was, <laughs> it, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. He literally threw my man's <laughs> ball all the way to the other side of the court. Like he, yo, he he smacked. He was like he was on a preschool hoop, and he blocked like dog, like. He blocked the air at that ball. That was embarrassing. That was <laughs> yeah. embarrassing. That was, Think about what happened to you. <laughs> that, that was embarrassing. So, you know, typical ho hum game for Mitch. Um, but again, I you know, just to, if just to nitpick a little bit. And and they even said it on the telecast as well. Just take a jumper, man. Now's the time yeah. to let it fly. Just throw throw up a fifteen footer or two, man. Get get a little bit selfish and throw up a fifteen footer. The lobs are not always gonna be there, JLs. You, you know, the, the lobs are not always gonna be there. And when these guys crash the boards on them, you know, three on one, two on one, he's got to find another way to to be effective uh, on the yeah. offensive end. Now would be Yo, the time. What you think? Yeah, I definitely agree, man. You've been working on it all summer. Just let it go, man. Unleash the beast. Get the Unleash number. it. And you know what else too? I don't know if you caught this, but. There was like a section where they like they called a foul or something, and, and Mitch had the ball at the three point at the top of the key. He got a little bit of a handle, dog. Yeah. <laughs> are, are, you to, are, you, are you talking? Are you talking about the play that that he finished with the, like the scoop layup, or the or where no. he, he was just dribbling from the top of the key and kind of no, just was dished just it off? Dribbling on a dead play. Like, I remember the that. Play was dead. Uh, I think somebody called a foul. And he was just waiting for the. He just started dribbling the ball between his legs a little bit. I was like, wait a minute. Come on, Mitch. Yeah. Like, wait, what? Are you holding out on us, man? Mitch can do more. Mitch, Mitch, can, do Mitch, more. Can, Mitch can do more, man. He can do more. I feel like this is a lot. I think the ceiling for him might be a scary, a lot scarier and higher than we think. He just needs to be comfortable and actually pull some shots and take some some chances. Yeah, I saw him. I I saw him put the ball on the ground from the free throw line. Had had that nice little scoop layup. Yeah, and, you know, was- a little ice manish out there. Man, Mitch can get some game, man. He just gotta have confidence in what he's doing. Yeah, he's like so coordinated. Just that scoop layup alone lets you know how coordinated he is and how much improvisation he has. I feel like he can kind of, he might be able to actually apply it to other parts of his game if he just allows himself. To. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not, man? Uh, so that was RJ. We talked about RJ. We talked about Knox. We talked about Mitch. Iggy, Iggy had a, had another solid game uh, yeah. for for young Iggy. My man Alex Wolf from Posting and Toasting called him Ig Nasty. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. I kind of like that as well, man. I kind of like that as well. So Iggy finished with, uh, I believe he dropped 16. Yeah, 16 points, four boards, 50% shooting for the night, two or four from three, four or five from three, sorry, correction. Put some some correction on it, four or five from downtown. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, early early uh, thoughts on Iggy from again from seeing him in person, seeing him in these games. Number one, he's strong. Yeah. Uh, ball control, body control, how he shields himself and and finishes very strong. Could definitely shoot the three. Has, you know, has a nice little shooter's touch on him. And um, to me, for for coming out one year straight out of college, he, he plays pretty poised and in control, man. What, what's your takes on him? It's kind of it's kind of crazy how controlled he is, man. Like I don't get nervous when is uh when he when he's in the game. He I love the way he posts up and he's ambidextrous. He can go from posting yeah. from the right hand to the left hand, and then he can hook either right hand, left hand. So if he's left down there. It's either all. It's, it's, it's done so. And he can pass. He's a smart passer. He's a smart. He can shoot. He's a very good all-around player. Um, plays defense. Rotates well. I really don't really have any complaints. Like, the only reason I feel like he might have gone the second round is be maybe he's not super athletic and he's kind of like a tweener. Right. But he's a very polished, complete player. Yeah. Polished, man. Polished. I, I like what this kid was bringing, is bringing to this team. I'm very curious to see if he can crack the rotation, if he can crack a second unit. I'm curious to see a second unit of a Peyton, Iso, Iggy, maybe get Marcus Morris, maybe, and maybe a Bobby Portis at the five. Yeah. Interesting to see how that runs. And another thing, he can start the break just like Kevin Knox, you know, yeah. is capable of doing. So you, you're kind of getting these guys between RJ, Knox, Iggy, you know, throwing ISO out there. A lot of guys that can, you know, start that break and, and start the offense. So yeah, I'm, like, I'm excited to see what they, how this kid, how they use this kid in the, yeah, in man. the future. If we, get, if we get Morris in there, that would be nice to have like a Morris Morris in there with, uh, you know, I'm forgetting his name right now. Portis? Morris, Portis. Yeah, Portis. I, I, I like that idea. Offense, defense, both yeah. kind of yeah. Kind of like, and with Iggy in there too, kind of forcing the fast. Yeah, I like it. I yeah. like it. I, I, I like Iggy, man. I, I really like this kid. This kid's Moxie, man. He he has that grit, man. That that's what we're talking about when we're talking about New York Knicks. Yeah, man. And yo, even Kadeem Allen, man, Kadeem Allen had a nice point guardy game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. He, he he had a nice bounce back game as well. Yeah, like, dude, this is this is the stuff I'll be talking about with Kadeem. A hundred percent from the field. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. There we go. There we go. A hundred percent, bro. This one you thought, oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna just drop thirteen and six and shoot a hundred percent from the field. And and you know what? Him and Mitch really you know set the tone defensively. I mean, like I said, the Lakers. Uh, I'm not really sure what to make of their summer league team. You know, they really seem like they they came with anybody. Uh, uh, too great out there, but at the same time, I thought Iggy, uh, I thought um, Kadeem Allen and Mitch kind of really set the tone and got aggressive out from the jump and, and really helped the Knicks, you know, get out there early on them. Yeah, me too, me too, man. Mitch and and Kadeem very really set the tone. They're like they continue what they did in the last season and brought it to summer league. I started pressing on the defensive end and intimidating everybody who shot the ball or bought the ball. Yeah. Love Absolutely, man. So uh, that you know, that was generally the the, the uh, recap. You know, good to see them play. I don't know what the future holds for them in terms of summer league playoffs. We'll have to. I'll check Twitter while the show goes on and see what the update is in terms of whether or not they make the playoffs. I mean, with only one win, I'm not too sure. And as yeah. I told you, JL, I'm kind of glad I missed the deadline to, to bet on them as as taking the summer league chip. Yeah, because, uh, that, man, Woo. <laughs> that that, that might have just been Vegas taking advantage of, of the the overzealousness and anxiousness of the Knicks fans. Good thing I missed the deadline. Yeah, man. Like, come on. Like, what, what luck? The game. First of all, it was rigged. All right. First game we had an earthquake. You know what I mean? He was coming back. Yeah. Second yeah, game, right. ISO is in, is sick. True. He can't play. He's he's a bucket getter. And then it's like, damn, son. So you're gonna take out, a, you're, gonna, you're gonna be taken out by an earthquake and our best, one of our best scorers on the bench. Like, come on, dog. We we, we caught some bad breaks, man. We caught some yeah, bad exactly. breaks. But yeah, Greg, I, I caught, I caught a, a dodge the bullet, Greg. I definitely dodged the bullet. Yeah, um, <laughs> one one other guy, Steve Perez in the chat said, um, asked about Kavanaugh. I like Kavanaugh. You know, he only had about five points tonight. But in the game yeah. that I watched him against Phoenix, he's a very smart, high IQ player. Uh, he always seems to be in the right spots defensively. He's always, you know, he always makes the right play. 
can knock yeah. down the threes at three. He's capable of knocking down the outside shot. I think Kavanaugh's tough. Maybe he gets a run with Westchester, you know, down the road. Yeah, I could definitely see Kavanaugh getting, getting in there with the Westchester Knicks and having a, a nice little Westchester squad. Uh, yeah. This Build them up and see what we can do. Maybe yeah. you get a call up. Maybe get bring them over next year. <clears throat> Potentially, man. Potentially. So, uh, yeah, that that was the wrap up. Knicks win once again, beating the Lakers one seventeen to ninety six. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys in the late night tilt. Uh, let's mm-hmm. go to the phone, JLs. First up is Esau from Buffalo. Wants to talk about Knox and RJ's improvements. Esau, what's going on, man? Are, are you a new caller, bro? Yes, I am. I'm an old viewer. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm doubt. I'm an old viewer. Okay, cool, man. So no welcome welcome to the fan show, man. Since 72, so. Oh, man, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm old here. Um, <clears throat> I just want a question and um, an and observation. What's wrong with ISO? Why is he um, not playing? Um, they, they said he's sick. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm not too sure. He, he's been sick since the Phoenix game and hasn't played. Um, and, and, you know, maybe he's just resting, too, you know, honestly. Maybe he's, he's just getting some yeah. rest. Uh, yeah, maybe. He tweeted about how yeah, was... being sick um, in Vegas. In Vegas, yeah. <laughs> he tweeted that, like, yesterday. So maybe he's sick. I don't know. Right. Well, I hope you don't have any. You probably got a little food poison or something. Let's hope not. Yeah, hope, hope not. And my, my observation is this. Okay, the Knicks look really good tonight. RJ, I mean, yeah, RJ looked good. Mm-hmm. Knox looked good. Mitch was Mitch, you know, and um, Kadeem came back with a bounce back game. But I'm thinking with the acquisitions that we that we've uh, acquired, and with those guys working more with the young guys, I see us winning more than 17 games this season. What do you guys think about that? I got, got it, Jail. Take that. And I don't mean just eighteen either. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Jail? Nah, I, th- I think we're in good shape to, to double our win total. I, I can see us hitting 30, 35 wins it's easily, especially with uh, the, the additions of Julius Randle and bringing part Portis over here, and maybe some of the young guys get better. Who knows? The young guys are really the X factor. Yeah. Right now, I feel like if the young guys are staying mm-hmm. packed around now. We can hit 30, 35. If, if, if somebody like DSJ takes a big step, that's going to be huge for us. And maybe we can kind of flirt with it. But right now I'm saying 30, 35. Uh, excellent segue, Jay Ellis, because my thing is, I think DSJ is going to be the key, man. I think yeah. DSJ is going to be the X factor in, in determining, you know, how far this team can, can really go. He, he's saying a lot of good things. He's working hard. As we see, he's in the gym now with CP3, which I think is great. I think mm-hmm. that's great. Uh, he's working on his jump shot. Looks like he's trying to get in better shape. He's saying all the right things. He wants to make the playoffs. He wants to make RJ the, the, the rookie of the year. All that's great. I think DSJ is going to be the key, man, on, on, and if he can really orchestrate this offense and get us going. But I think, you know, I've said 29. I, my target is 29. If we get anything more than that, then I'll be I'll be happy. Yo, if DSJ hits jump shots, I, I'll say if DSJ hit 35% from three, Yeah, I think he might be in good shape. But actually, Peyton, I think, no. Even Peyton, too, but I feel like DSJ has been working on his jumper this offseason more. So I feel like it's more likely he might be DSJ doing that, if, if, any, if anything. We'll see what yeah. happens. I just feel like, you know, I think Peyton, we kind of know what he is. You know, like, yeah, maybe he still has room to grow. But I feel like DSJ, we just, he's the sample size hasn't been enough yet. You know what it is? Man? I can't sleep on somebody who had five triple doubles last season. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I just think offensively, I think DSJ huh. could be a much more impact player. Of course, on the on the yeah. defensive end, Peyton is more solid. Um, but you know, I think DSJ has, has has the ability to to really be impact player on the offensive end. True. All right, Esau, appreciate the call, man. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. And again, once again, welcome to the channel. To the channel. Um, salute to everybody watching right now. Uh, if you guys are new in the chat, leave us with a hashtag new so we can shout you guys out. Uh, let's shout out some of the OGs that were in here. Matthew Willard was in here early. John Talento, as usual. A la Wise, what's going on? Coach East, my man Coach East, what's going on? Uh, JL, so you want to shout out in the chat right now? Uh, 
Ah uh, man, Gil Humphreys, I see you over here. What up, Gil? Yep. Knicks tape out here, all maxed out. Q Fitty, Coach Coach Charles Charter, uh, Jimmy, Jay's official. What's going on? I see you guys out here. Thanks for coming through. Yeah. What do you guys in the chat think about Esau's question? How many how many wins would you would you predict for this team right now between the young guys and, and the vets that they put together? Like I said, I think twenty nine. I think is a realistic target. I think twenty nine is a realistic target. Anything over that, I, I'd be happy about. Thirty. You know, <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, you'd hope for thirty five. You hope for forty. You, you know, you hope for. But like I said, it starts on the. It's gonna have to start with defensively, and I think also DSA is gonna have to be. He's gonna have to be that guy for us. He, he's gonna have to be that guy for us. I see yeah, a lot man. of. I see a lot of thirty five. a lot of people. Carlos Martinez, thirty five. Pettison, Steven, thirty five. Uh, 34. Yeah, I think we're we're within range. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, Steve Stocks is 72. Good God. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Nick like Stapes says, I'm going uh, bold by saying 35. Gil Humphrey is going for the eighth spot. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll see. I, I, I think we're, we're um, very much in, in, in range. All right, let's go back to the phones. Marcel from Brooklyn wants to talk about um, the Knicks win. Marcel, how you feeling, bro? Hey, good morning. What? Good morning, East Coast. <laughs> What's good going evening, on, man? West Coast. Thanks for taking. Thanks for taking the time for the call tonight. Yeah, no time, no problem. Well, I just say about the Knicks. They're in the summer league. They're looking good so far. I like these three newest members of our blue and orange. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They'll be happy. They beating the Lake Show, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, only summer league, so I mean, I don't really think you know the score really matters or the win. I, I think we we just want to see, you know, how how these young guys are looking. What are they working on? You know, are, are they improving? Right. You know, things things like that. That that's good. That's good. Now, here's the question: If the Knicks. And the Lakers are rivalries themselves, mm -hmm. like Frazier, the Busher, uh, Sarks, for many years past, mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. with Brian O'Neill and many other. I don't, I don't know. I think we lost him. I think we lost him. Yeah, it wasn't me, man. Mar Marcel's callback. I, I think we lost him. The switch we might be having an issue with the switchboard, though. Hang on one second. So to everybody in the chat once again. Yeah. Um, where were you going with that question? It's I'm not. Too, I'm not too sure. Where I was trying to figure out. You yeah. need to figure out where the question is going at by the setup. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not too sure where he was going. I know. I know we're not set for a rivalry this year. Yeah. I know that. So I was like, where is he going? With this? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with the switchboard. Hang on one second. Let me just uh, <clears throat> refresh this here. No, we didn't do that on purpose, chill. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't do that on purpose, man. We we wouldn't do that. Everybody gets a a, a fair shake. Actually, no CP would do it. <laughs> it depends. 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 <laughs> it depends. You know, but no, not not in that instance, man. O only in instances of of disrespect. Yeah. You know, we don't accept those things. I'm trying to get back in the switchboard. While I do that, um, this Saturday, special guest coming on this Saturday, we got John Smilk from yeah. WFAN. Speaking of Greg says WFAN, we got John Smilk from WFAN 660. Those of you from Twitter know who that is. Um, we got John coming through. What's up? And, uh, and give us his thoughts on, on Knicks Free Agency and give us his thoughts on the Summer League, R.J. Barrett, and, and, and things of that nature. All right. Um, I'm not. Uh, Hello. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's up? Sorry about this, you guys. Oh, all good, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You guys having a little chat about the technical difficulties? Uh, yeah. That's that's okay. 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 Now, if if the Knicks and the Lakers are the rivalries of the NBA, why mm -hmm. are these two teams calling East? meets west uh i'm not sure i'm not sure man but they're not rivalries anymore man yeah, um but, 
But thanks, thanks for the call. Paul from Phoenix. Uh, what's it talking about playing RJ at the small forward? Paul, how you feeling, bro? Hey, guys. How you doing, man? Thanks for taking my call. Yep, no problem, man. No I grew problem. up in Port Chester, New Rochelle, so mm-hmm. I've been out here in Phoenix for a while, but I love your show. Okay. Love your show. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Paul. So, so, so yeah, man, I was, my question was that I've been pretty critical of watching RJ the first two games mm-hmm. and looking at his athleticism and his shot and stuff, but obviously tonight he rebounded mm-hmm. well. And I'm just wondering, do you, was he, do you think he was playing more of a three position today, or do you think like maybe he is more of a forward than a guard? And do you think that might help his development at least early on? You got any thoughts on that? Go ahead, Jails. I mean, right now it seems to be working because he can overpower certain twos, and that's kind of his game. If he starts to play the small forward, right. I'm not sure if he'll be able to do that as easily considering all these small forwards are just that much bigger. Yeah. NBA. So I would try I would That's fair. Um, right now. If he was more like crafty, shifty type of player then maybe Right. I I would uh I'd be more open to that. Right. I, I think for now I think I think they're gonna slide him in at the two. Yeah. You know, maybe ideally down the road you, you wanna go a bit smaller and, and throw that Knox at the four, maybe RJ at the three idea. Um, maybe run RJ a little bit more point forward as well. Well, I, I agree with Jay Ellis. You know, I don't think he really has um, the agility or the shiftiness as yet to, to really, um, you know, get past some of the bigger threes in the game. You know, so so maybe if running at the two kind of allows him to utilize his strength and kind of muscle up some guys as well. Yeah. I hear you. That's fair. That's fair. One other thing I just want to throw out there uh, – being out here in Phoenix, Peyton was out. Alfred Peyton was out here a couple of years ago. We had him for just a little while. Yeah, what do you and think I'm about sneak, him? Man, he's kind of like a Rondo type. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was just asking. What What was your take on him watching him out there? Yeah, you know, I, he was better than advertised. Um, not flashy, but like triple double, like ten points, ten assists, ten rebounds, like low triple double, like Rondo type numbers, and he might. Obviously, I want to see DSJ, uh, you know, Dennis Smith Jr. T- pick it up a notch this year. Obviously, but mm-hmm. if not, on the sneak, he might be he might be a real key, like you're saying. The point guard is definitely going to be needed. Uh, but I think I think he'll be pleasantly surprised by just how steady he is, how kind of low key he is, and he just kind of he reminds me a lot of Rondo. Obviously, he's a little bigger, but he kind of plays like that. Okay. All right, man. Appreciate the call, Paul. Hey, JLS, I'd love to see it, man. You could always use multiple point guards. We need ball movement, man. We need ball yeah. movement. You know, we definitely need guys that can finish. I think that was part of the problem last year uh, where some of our guards, you know, maybe looked a little bit worse than they were is because I think we were the worst in the league in hitting open shots. Yeah. I think we missed the most open shots in the league. So when we're not finishing – you know, obviously the, the the guards are gonna look a lot worse. Yeah, but you know what it is this too. It's like you know, I was excited about like I think we talked about this before how I would like Alfred Payton here, but I wasn't sure if we wanted him here because of you know I wanted to get direction. But now that he's here, I'm I'm excited about him. I, I've always kind of had my eye on him ever since he was on um, Orlando because of like what he said, he's just a complete player. Yeah, he plays defense and offense, and he can set up his teammates pretty well and. If he didn't, if he didn't have a season cut short with the Pelicans, I feel like he could have done a lot more damage, damage there. I think he might be able to get him in the right time, and he might be better at the guard spot than we thought. Yeah, I he agree, just man. He just, needs, he just needs a jumper. I agree. <laughs> you know, I I have no issues with him uh, starting. Like I said, I, I want to give DSJ that first look. Yeah. I want to see if DSJ can really, you know, uh, ascend. You know, it's a lottery pick, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, man. Let, let's, let's be honest. He's a lottery pick. I want to see if he can really maximize on his potential and take another step up this year. And if you have, like I say, if you have Peyton and Iso as that second unit, maybe That's Iggy. Nice. Maybe yeah. Iggy. I kind of like that. I kind of like, like that. Peyton and Iso together. Yeah, because, because then nice. you, you can let Iso be Iso. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and and do what he does does best because I know a lot of people kind of get annoyed that, you know, he doesn't facilitate as much as you'd like, you know. So I, I think having Peyton out there can can really help get the offense more fluid. Yeah, man. And I wonder, too, because Peyton and, and Julius Randle have kind of a synergy, too, because they played together. That's right. 
<clears throat> That's right. They did play in the Pelicans together. You you wonder how much those two will be used together as well. Yep. A- absolutely, man. All right, we got two calls in from Atlanta. Doc Ross is back. Wants to talk about uh, the potential of the starters. Doc, how you feeling, man? What's going on, y'all? What's going on, man? I'm good, man. Feeling good, man. I'm calling in two for two. Two for two, back to back. So it's pretty good. I got a question, yo, though. Mm -hmm. Who was the dude, the Phileas Frog dude that called earlier? Like he was trying to set you guys up for something. I, 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 nah, I don't know. I, I think, I think he was, you know, coming with respect. But you know, I'm not too sure where that call was going. But you know, yeah, (laughs) yeah. But like, I liked how RJ was playing tonight, man. My question for uh, J. Ellis is, if RJ starts at the two. Do you think now Dotson is going to be relegated to the bench? Man, I'm scared, man. Free Dot, yeah, man, I'm scared. I'm not gonna <laughs> ah, yeah. I'm not going to lie, yeah. I'm scared. Because okay. even now, like, I know why RJ has to start, but I know, I feel, I I want shooting at the two. I'm conflicted, man. But I know RJ has to start because he's a lottery pick. He's a third pick and you have to start him. But it's like, damn, yeah, I feel like Dot. Yeah. I, I still feel like Dotson is that is gonna be a nice. I mean, he's gonna be a good three and D, a three and D, a three and D guy who's not gonna disrupt the the offense and he's gonna play decent. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah, and it's like Dotson put that work in. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want you know I don't want them to just give it to RJ. But RJ, he got the, you know he, he's a number three pick. He got the size and everything, so they probably gonna feel him in and everything. But uh, I wanted to tell you guys, I think my starting five is going to be probably Dennis Smith Jr. Y'all should run a uh, y'all should run a contest like the who to start, whoever picked the first starting five should be a contest. But mm-hmm. I think it's going to be Dennis Smith Jr., R.J. Knox, Julius Randle, and uh, Mitch. That's if we don't get Marquise Morrison. Yeah, you know, but I, that's what I, 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 think I don't really see that that changing. lineup really getting challenged. I I see the only position maybe up for debate is point guard. I think two, three, four, and five is locked in. Yeah, yeah. A two, yeah. three, four, and five yeah. is locked in. Point guard, maybe, maybe because you did pay El- Alfred Payton as well. So you know, we'll, we'll see yeah. what Fizz says and in the, the first the, first day of training camp. If it's if it's keep what you kill, J. Ellis. Oh yeah, you know. keep what you gonna live by you, you. You keep what you kill and keep everything. You, you gonna live by that mentality. Oh boy, they might leave yeah. Frank at Black Ops my, my, basketball. My last thing I wanted to summer. say is. My last thing I wanted to say is, you know, I do think that we can make the number one AC, um, AFC. I'm not trying to, like, you know, bolster everybody up. I've been a Knicks fan too long to, like, you know, walk around with blinders and everything since the 80s. I know what's real and what's not and everything. But if we could get these dudes hungry and they could come in and, like, I always, like, you know, I, I teach my son about basketball. You know, he wanted to start learning how to play basketball. And when I show him old school Knicks tapes, the one person I show him Believe it or not, is John Starks, mm-hmm. and I show him John Starks because you know I tell him I say like the dude was bagging groceries, and he mm-hmm. had heart, yeah, and if true. we could come in there with that heart, I think we could like you know make I think we could get the AC, but it depends on if you know people just trying to get theirs, but people come in there with that heart, then I think that we got a good shot at the AC realistically. Okay, what y'all think? I, hey, I'd love to see it, man. Um, I won't, I won't. Uh set the bar that high for them because I don't I don't want to get disappointed. You know what Definitely. I'm saying, JLs? But like I said, let, let's let's get to twenty nine wins. Let's, get, <laughs> get to 20. let's break I, seventeen first. I feel I feel what he's saying though. I mean look, we we signed in a bunch of hard players. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean if we get Morris, that's gonna be like the, the ice cream, the cherry on top of the ice cream right there. If we get Morris. Portis got a little chip on his shoulder. Uh you know he, he likes growling on dudes. Uh, Julius Randle is a high motor, and he likes to work for it as well. I mean, we, we got a bunch of guys, and Taj Gibson is a Brooklyn boy too. Yeah, and he's always that hard in his whole career. So he, he signed a bunch of guys with heart to try to kind of bring these young guys up. Hopefully, it works. Mm-hmm. What happened, man? Uh, when was the last time we made the playoffs? Uh, Next tape. <laughs> Next tape. It's it's been a while, man. And every year we say the same thing, man. I think this team could make the playoffs. Yeah. And and we just don't get there. We got we got to defend. I yeah, mean, we got we got to defend. That's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. You know, you're talking about your, your starting perimeter players. Perimeter defense has always been on Achilles heel. RJ DSJ Knox. They're going to have to come with it, man. Yo, that's the only that's the only that's, like 
the fans doesn't really prioritize these, but that's the that's the thing where you can say, well, will will Alfred win that starting spot? Because Peyton right. play because that don't you know it'll give you a bit better balance. But it's like if he's not scoring and if RJ's not really shitting this, knocking down those shots. I don't, right. you know, that's the thing. It's kind of clunky, even with DSJ. It's kind of clunky yeah. because it's like, you know, can RJ play that off ball? Can DSJ hit those shots off ball? Yeah. It's kind of clunky. Like somebody has to be, be get better for the to work. <laughs> somebody got to get better, man. Somebody has to get better. Everybody like, gotta nothing get better. is a natural fit right now. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is, nothing is really uh, a natural fit. So it's going to be interesting, man. Mm-hmm. Thank God I'm not the coach. <laughs> thank god thank god i'm not the coach That's yeah man appreciate the call doc um let's keep it in the a let's go to chad he wants to talk about iggy and rj chad how you feeling bro i don't know Ski, key and jay ellis what's going on how you feeling man uh-huh. well, pretty good pretty good uh, trying to call him more often yeah no doubt Pre- appreciate it man yeah. um all right so I was saying with uh, Iggy, when they drafted him, and me and my brother, we looked him up on YouTube, and we was both like, yeah, we like this guy. Because you could see from his highlight tapes that they showed at Michigan, he could finish at the rim like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not athletic, but he knows how to get to his spots mm-hmm. in his body and his strength. Um, kind of like, uh, you could say like Paul Pierce in a way. Paul Pierce wasn't athletic, but he knew how to get where he needed to be to get his shot off. Um, if he could crack the rotation and give us about 10, 11 points a game in this rookie season, that would be great. Um, RJ, from the first the first game I seen, it seemed like they didn't run too many plays for him. And he was just trying to force his way into the action when he got the ball. That's why his shots wasn't falling too much. Mm-hmm. And then these later games, he's been getting the ball more get to a spot, hitting his shots, making passes, grabbing rebounds, and, and starting a fast break. So I think that works out for him. Um, and I want to leave you guys with this question here. Uh, as far as RJ's game, I feel like in three or four years, he'll be a point guard because he needs the ball. He's yeah. six, seven. Um, he probably will be – he won't have a usage rate like James Harden as far as, like, the shots. Mm-hmm. But he'll definitely play that that, that six seven point guard that can that can that can take it to the basket. His shot, I believe, his shot will get better, and he'll get everybody involved. So how do you feel about that? Hey, my my favorite player was a man named Penny Hardaway. Man, if, if RJ could be half half oh. of that, I'd love to see it. I, I'd love to see it because Penny was I still my have guy. His toy. You got the little penny joint? I still got the toy, the, the little penny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I got the sneakers, because uh, my aunt worked at Models. Yeah. In, um, in Five Town. And uh, we got got the sneakers for, for back to school, and I, I still got the toy <laughs> to this day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that, hey, man, Penny was my guy, man. Still breaks my heart that he he, yeah. he never really fulfilled his, his promise as an NBA player, man. He could have been a legend. He could have been a legend. But if RJ could be half that, yeah. man, I, I'd love to see it, man. All right, Chad, appreciate the call, bro. Appreciate y'all. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Next up on the docket, JLs, is our guy. He's got the clipboard at home working on his lineups and play plays right now. He 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 erased all the free agency uh uh, uh scribble <laughs> in the scrapbook, J. Ellis, and he's now working on summer league rotations and plays. Will from LI, what's going on, bro? Okay, all right. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> what up, bro? Oh, oh, Will. So, an introduction like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so mad about that clipboard, man. I got that. Like, that clipboard was, it was the gospel. And it, I was yeah. preaching, and then I just turned <laughs> yeah, to a crowd. I was preaching. Like, we're, we're way past that at this point. <laughs> Oh, man, uh, what's good, bro? First off, CP, happy to see that you're all right, that the earthquake didn't shake you. And yeah, you I'm good, man. out here not even feeling the shock. You know? Yeah. So, you know, good for you. <laughs> you know, good on you. And... Appreciate it, bro. I think we lost Will, man. Hang on, hang on. I think the uh, having some, some clipboard. Yep. Will, you still there? 
Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Loud and clear. Go ahead. Hello? Yep, loud and clear. Go ahead. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm happy that JL's got the channel, so you guys can still do the live stream and still give us the content. Um, but to get to my point, um, everything that I'm looking and what I'm seeing, I'm really excited about Kevin Knox this upcoming season. Mm-hmm. What he's been doing in the summer league, I'm very happy of what I've been seeing. The growth, his shot looks more cleaner, more consistent. Even when he has those shooting stumps, he's still going for it. And RJ as well, you know, obviously the first game he didn't uh, he had the jitters, you know, everything like that playoff atmosphere was really hyped. But after that, he really came around. But ultimately, I have this question for you guys. Mm-hmm. So this season, we're, it's still a development season to win as much as we can so ultimately would you rather take a loss meaning like you'll play rj in those crunch times just to give him that, like his lumps to say or to let him get his runs in or would you put a more veteran player in his place even to put us in a better position to win the game ultimately so i think we're gonna have to start making those decisions when we really try to see what we want to do with this team whether we're going to prioritize development or we're going to try to develop or try to win the game at all costs. I mean, but who, who who's a veteran that you really would, you know, think to prioritize him over in terms of even late game situations? I mean, I mean, I mean I, if we I get, if ISO. we get in the Morris. Oh, maybe right? ISO, maybe Let's ISO. Oh, okay, JL. ISO. Maybe yeah. ISO. Yeah. Like maybe you, um, Maybe you take out a player, uh, you know, that you – that one of the big guys, I don't know, um, uh, Bobby Portis with his crazy-ass eyes, right? <laughs> you put him in, yeah. right? But then, you know, maybe Mitch is – you know, you're not seeing that that run from Mitch or from um, Iggy, who's been just amazing. Mm-hmm. Another steal from Scott Perry, mm-hmm. you know? It's just about, you know, what – if we're looking for development, you know – Ultimately, I just don't want a moody situation. I don't want to invest into yeah. a guy that's not going to be here. Like that was just to this day is stupid. No, like, that should have been Frank's minutes. That was a, that was a complete we waste of time. Yeah, that, was, would have been. that was a complete waste of time. Go, go ahead, Jails. I feel like I feel like the Knicks are going to go more um, win. I feel like it's about winning this. Year. Fizz got to get wins, man. Mm. I feel like it's, it's about. I feel like this yeah. is the last season was straight up development. This season is more. We're still going to develop, but we try to get these W's, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I feel like Fish is just gonna straight up have try to have the best team out there at the end, and not have like Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, guarding your best offensive yeah. player. Like, he's not gonna have a. I don't think he's gonna be doing things like that. Mm. The best defensive player is gonna be guarding the best offensive player. Gotcha. Yeah. Close. I feel like that's what's gonna be. <laughs> if RJ is having a heart a hot night or something, then maybe. He might throw him in mm-hmm. on like, like that. That's that's my guess. Fizz, Fizz got to coach the win, man. You okay. can't it can't just be enough okay. with the juggling of the lineups. Keep the same lineup in there, unless you see something is absolutely not working. You know, maybe switch in and out one play, but you can't keep coming in with the musical chairs. You got to be coaching the late game situations mm. to win. Yeah. And, and Moody is in Utah for whoever said Moody is a free agent. Moody is yeah, Moody is, in, Moody is in Utah. He's in Utah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah, man. All right, well, man. Ultimately, I just see the core guys we have. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, go ahead. Finish, finish no, your ultimately, thought. Ultimately, I just want to say, I, I, yeah, I just see the core, the type of core we have is this dot, this ISO, and it's like the honest truth is that not, and now it's Iggy. Iggy just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. He looks real good. Mm-hmm. I want all these guys to get the run, but with the veterans we have, somebody's got to take the short end of the set, even Kadeem Allen to a certain extent. So ultimately it's like, we're going to have to, someone's got to get the short end of the set. I hope it's not Dodd. I hope it's not uh, Alonzo, you know, or someone else. But ultimately yeah. I just think we just got to think about that as Knicks fans because it might have to come up and we might have to make those hard decisions. I hear that. I hear that. I mean, hard decisions is in, indeed, man. Right. But you know, guys are gonna have to. Go, guys are gonna shake out of the lineup. And Kadeem is out. Kadeem's out. Um, forget, mm. forget him. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just being realistic. Like Kadeem Allen's out. I think Dot might be on the outside looking in. I, I mean, look, if we're gonna go ten, ten deep, right? We're gonna yeah, go. Is we already said starting five, right? We said DSJ. We said ISO. 
I mean, sorry, we said DSJ, we said RJ, we said Knox, Randall, Mitch. Second yeah. unit, you're going Peyton, ISO, or Dot. More than likely, he's going to go ISO first. And the crazy part about it is we ain't even talking about Reggie Bullock because they because we supposed to yeah. sign Reggie Bullock. I feel like the Knicks might have been trying to flirt with starting Reggie Bullock at some point, man. I feel like that might where been, though. I don't know, but <laughs> he said I don't know. Man. They didn't sign. I don't think they signed him for nothing. I mean, or, or looking to sign him for nothing. They listen, man, with, with a bum foot, you got to come off the bench, though. I'm going Iggy, man. I'm seeing. I'm throwing Iggy out there first. Cause he's he's I, I knocking it, he's knocking down those threes. I feel you. Uh, and, now, he, and, and he can create, man. I'm going Iggy, man. I'm throwing. Iggy I understand. I understand, but you know, you know what it is? Because Bullock has been hitting the threes at a good clip for his career. I mean, he has a bum foot right now, so who knows how many games he's gonna play? Yeah. So why the repercussion that contract in the first place? Right. But um, yeah. I, I'm throwing Iggy in there. I tell Bullock throw some ice on it and call us when you're ready, man. That. Send send him the Chris Brickley and them and Mello. Send him the Chris Brickley and Mello's training camp because you know Mello ain't got no job. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, man. hey, I love Mello, oh. man. It's just like damn, it's becoming Yo. a joke now, man. Mello ain't going to Lakers. No, man. LeBron didn't even give him a call, man. Oh, did him dirty, man. Come on, JLs, bro. How do you not even call your boy the Banana Boat Brothers? What's going on, man? Yo, man, boat's close. Sheesh. <laughs> Throw him a bone, man. Something. But anyway, so I said DSJ, uh, Barrett, Knox, Randall, Mitch, right? That's your first five. Your second five is going to be Alfred Payton, likely ISO, yeah. Iggy Bullock. Do you get Marcus Morris? That makes things complicated. That makes things complicated. And then you go in Portis or Gibson. Yeah, I guess it'd be Portis. Right. So, I mean, in that regard, I think Dot is on the outside looking in. I think Frank is out. I don't know where. I don't even know if they got room on the bench for Frank right now. I'm not sure. Yeah, man. Kadeem, Kadeem will be in the G League. G League. There's going to be a lot of G Leagues. Kadeem, Kadeem will be in the G League. Kadeem will definitely be in the G League. Yeah. Or Frank might be in the G League. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Who I'm not sure. Knows? Uh, I'm not sure, man. It'll be interesting to see, man. That's all I say. Let, let's go to um, Detroit. Let's go to Carl from Detroit. He wants to talk about um, Frank's future. And he wants to talk about John Starks. So, Carl, are you a new uh, caller? Yeah, what's going down, man? How you feeling, bro? Big time fan of the show, man. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be doing y'all thing, for that, real, for real. Thanks a lot, brother. Appreciate the support, man. Hey, man, no doubt. But, yo, listen, we got to get down to basics, man. I'm okay. so sick and tired of hearing about, number one, about Frank, man. Mm-hmm. Yo, with RJ and with our little, with the other little little dudes we got, yo, your man Frank is done. He's done for the I, night, man. I sadly, you gotta pack it in. I and on sadly the low, think so, He's been man. soft. He had two years. And he's been, been soft. He looked like the new Tevin Campbell out there, man. I'm just tired of hearing people talk about this defense. Yo, you can't shoot. You can't do nothing, man. Come on, man. You got to show me something. He, he, this is and it, really, Jails. just to take it a step further, I don't even want, you know, I don't want Frank. You know what else I don't want? Yo, y'all could keep uh, Marquise Morris. I don't want him. You know who I want to, you know, to want play him? his minutes? Yo, give it to Iggy, man. Iggy is out here balling. He looks like he is ready to go flat out. Okay. I mean, let's let's see. I don't, you know, we don't know yet if if it, how Iggy handles it at the next level. At least with Morris, yeah. you know, he's yeah. more of an established presence. Go, go ahead, Jails. Yeah, I'm with you. He's proven like Iggy is good. He's done well for himself in summer league. <laughs> let's keep that in context. He's done well for himself in summer league. Uh, Marquis Morris, he's been. I mean, Morris, he's been doing it in the NBA. Right. And. He's just a bigger body in general. We don't have a guy who can really guard other big bodies on the scene. Everybody here is like really long and thin. <laughs> Pause. Like, but we need somebody who can bang with other big men out out there. Yeah, I I think my thing, Carl. I think if 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 Marcus Morris wants to come here and he knows the deal, and he knows that he's gonna be coming off the bench, he knows that he's gonna be supporting the young guys, and he knows what the situation is. I would take him. I think we have nothing to lose by taking him. 
You, you know, as much as I would like to see I mean, Iggy get some run, that, but you know what though, I don't think he's gonna want to. Uh, I don't think he's gonna want to sit down and come off the bench, man. He got a little funky disposition, man. He seems like he's gonna want to come <laughs> in just a minute, flat <laughs> yeah. out. You know what I mean, well, listen, well, well, you know, we got the enforcer in Mitch. You know, he's the he's the Morris twin enforcer. So if he get out of line, we just throw Mitch at him, and, and that's just kind of settle things. But <laughs> you know, listen, I, I, I can't. Nah, I, don't that's real, the, man. I don't see the downside. Well, hey, man, you know, you know, uh, for real, keep doing your thing, man. And yo, this is hope and pray, man. We can finally get rid of this guy, Frank, man. This dude act out there like he shaved his leg. I'm just tired of just. I'm tired of our hearing about this defense. I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of these videos. It's, t- it's tired, tired of being realistic, everything. right? Let's just cleanse ourselves of this dude, Frank, man. <laughs> Appreciate the call, bro. What about the defense? <laughs> he said he's tired of hearing it. Uh, the defense is garbage, man. <laughs> all right, Carl. y'all take care, man. Love the show, man. Keep up the good work, fam. Appreciate it, bro. <laughs> I mean, you know, Jay Ellis, man, you know, I want the kid to, to succeed, bro. You know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? I was watching, um, I was watching Alan Hahn and Wiley, Wiley, uh, they were on IG Live. Oh, yeah? They wouldn't even, they wouldn't, yeah, they was like in the car, like going golfing or like some shit, you know, some Long Island oh, okay, shit. Okay, okay. So, they, <laughs> we, People kept asking about Frank. They wouldn't even they wouldn't even answer Frank questions. Damn, they were I'm tired. Like, yeah, I'm like, come on, man. Sheesh. Let him let him go. Let him live. Yeah. They wouldn't even answer questions about, about the kid. But you know, I want to see him succeed. You know, I, I think yeah, we we sit here, we joke about it. I want to see the kid succeed, but I just don't see it. I just feel like right now it might be the wrong time for him here. I will die on the hill. I feel like he's going to be a productive in Somewhere place. else, right? But I don't think he's going to be here. Somewhere because else, yeah. It's just, it's just, at this point, it's just too crowded. It's too crowded. Mm-hmm. And why is it too crowded? Because they're not confident in him. Yeah. They, if they were confident in him, they wouldn't stack the deck against him every year. Yeah, every year. Every year. You know. It's more stacked. More right. Stacked. But it's, 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 it's like we said, it's somewhere in the middle because at the same time, he's not showing and proving. Yeah, he has a short improve. I mean, look, listen, he had a few minutes. He, he was able to run the team okay for a stretch. Um, he got slightly more aggressive, but the shot went very south. <laughs> shot went south, man. And then the shot, the, the time that he had to prove himself is when, when Moody went down and he went down as well. So it was yeah. like, this is what it is. What can we do, man? It's, it's, All it's opportunity. Basketball is a next man up sport, man. Next man up. So, man. He's got to put himself somewhere else, man. Yeah, it's, it's a very, it's a very cold-blooded game, man. It's a very cold-blooded game, you know. It's, it's always next man up, and what can you do for me lately? So, we'll, we'll yeah. see, man. But salute to Carl for the for the call. Uh, welcome to Carl. Salute to everybody watching once again. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. I think we got about um, five hundred watching on YouTube. Okay. Um, so let's just hit this reset real quick. CP from Knicks Fan TV, my man Jay Ellis from Nick of Time Show. This is the number one post game show for the fans by the fans. If you're a diehard Knicks fan or even a basketball fan, man, this is this is yeah. this is the best show on YouTube, man. Forget it, forget about it. And, and anything NBA live stream. Like I say, that's just you know still keeping it humble, but keeping it real. I'll put our show up against anybody, Jay Ellis. Real talk. Work. From from a fan perspective. NBA live stream, you're getting live callers, you're getting live chats, you're getting Twitter reactions, you're getting highlights. I mean, what what more do you want? What more can I say? And we still bringing it. We still got more for him, JLs. There's, oh, there's yeah. still a lot more. And the, you're getting great guests. Ian mm-hmm. Begley, Mark Berman. We got John Schmuel from WFAN coming on. We had we had uh, Moke Hamilton from The Athletic. We had Tommy Beer from Forbes Magazine who I'm um, looking to book again. Once his once his schedule clears up, Tommy Beer will be back on the show. Is Mo a Nets fan? <laughs> you, you think he's what? Well, wait, wait, wait. What made you think Mo was a Nets fan? Just curious. Because I watched the episode, I was like, "Yo, he was smiling really hard about, and he was very complimentary." <laughs> yeah. About about the Nets, and I was just like, "No, if you don't stop complimenting these Nets." Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Moke was definitely a great guest. A shout out to him. The chat, the chat was roasted him, man. The chat was roasted him, man. It's, oh, there were so many people thinking he was a Nets fan in there. Okay, I, 
I mean, listen, this one. He, he was a great guest, though. He was really yeah, good. Yeah, he he was he was a great guest, and and he's very knowledgeable. But I think what what from what he says is he he covers both teams, he follows both teams, and he was just trying to keep it real, you know, just keep it real, just saying that the Nets made the better moves over the past few years, and we still got work to do. And I didn't really see him being wrong in, in that regard. No, nah, he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. It just you know you, you pick up on subtle. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you can tell when somebody likes somebody else, even though they don't say they like them. <laughs> By the way, like they they smile extra. You know what I'm saying? They like a they like a few more pictures than usual. The the, the smile is is a little yeah, wider, yeah. right? He, he lingers. He it's lingers a little, little late. <laughs> yeah, he lingers. Yeah, you're a fool, bro. But it's funny though because it, it's uh it's a very common sentiment from that show. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, man. If you guys are new in the chat, leave us for the hashtag new so we could uh, shout you guys out. Let's go to Teddy from South Carolina. He wants to talk about uh, Frank. See, now Carl got us on the Frank topic. Teddy, how you feeling, bro? Hey, what's up, CP? What's up, Jay? How you feeling, bro? Hey, I'm good, man. Hey, I just want to say, man, everybody keeps roasting Frank. He's still a kid, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he still got some work to do. And I feel if Phil didn't pick him up, when nobody had nothing to say about him, if, if Perry or Mills picked him up. So I'm, I wonder why everybody keep roasting him. He's still a kid. And he also feel like he don't got nobody that's on his side. He hasn't felt like he's been a Nick since he's been there. So yeah, it's hard to play like that. No, yeah. I, I hear you, man, and um, and appreciate the call, Teddy. But I think the thing is, Jails is like, yeah, we understand he's a kid. And that's why, you know, I don't want to, like, continue to rag on him because we know he's a kid, but basketball, the NBA is a man's sport, bro, and it's, and it's next man up. And sometimes, you know, what from what we've heard all these years is that he wasn't the choice for the organization. Oh. They've made moves that would indicate as such. Yep. They may not have developed him in the best of ways. Nope. And at the same time, he has not earned it. Let's just be honest. So there, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot at play here. And and all we're saying is that with the influx of people that they brought in, and the rook more rookies that they brought in, in those areas that he could potentially play, in, whether it's the one, the two, or the three, mm-hmm. it, it's a lot, Jim. He's not going to play. Yeah. It's a lot, Jim. Like the only thing. The only way he'll end up playing if there's a lot of injuries. See, to, to my, to my, in my opinion, right now. Yeah, it's like it's just so much competition from one to three. Because you're thinking, all right, if he's not gonna play the point guard, maybe he can play the three. Oh no, nah, but now we got Iggy, and you can play that at the three. You can play like you, you can go in, you can go a number of places, man. Then we got thirty-two shooting guards as well. So it's like, man. We, yeah, where's where the minute? That's all. Yeah, that's all it is. It's like where's the minutes coming from? And on um, Pedersen's ask if we want Frank as a point guard three over Kadeem, I'd rather give him that shot because I think he he has more potential to be fulfilled than Kadeem. I think we know what Kadeem Allen is, is likely gonna be. I don't see him really getting any better than he is. And it's not to say that he's a bad player, but I'd I'd rather take the time to develop Frank than to yeah. develop Kadeem Allen. We'll put Kadeem Allen in the G League and, and let Frank be the third point guard. I'm with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, appreciate the call, Teddy. I think we got a couple more calls and we'll wrap up. Let's shout out hashtag new Eric Harrison. Welcome to the channel. Jonathan S., welcome to the show. Coach Grady, welcome to the show. Got a lot of hashtag news in here. So salute mm-hmm. to all the uh, the new viewers, the new callers. See you guys. Right, Isaiah Ellis, I see you, cousin. Oh, you got a cousin in there. Okay, Isaiah oh, Ellis. Cousin. His name, last name is Ellis. Nice, oh. nice, nice, nice. Well, <laughs> welcome to the show, Cousin Ellis. We got Nell7182. They are new as well. And um, for everybody in the chat, just throw your city in here, man. We've heard from people from South Carolina, Detroit, North Carolina. We heard uh, uh, my guy from Phoenix, you know. One of the things, Jay Ellis, is, is you, you kind of realize a lot of the, the out-of-towners, you know, this is kind of the platform but that allows them to kind of connect with more Knicks fans because when you're out there in, in those locations, yeah, and especially some of those areas like South Carolina, that's a college town. You oh, know? yeah. So I, I kind of like that we're able to kind of fill that void for people, especially the out-of-towners, you know? Yeah, yeah you are not alone, man. Yeah, you are not alone, man. This, this is Knicks therapy. Yeah. <laughs> this is Knicks <laughs> therapy, man. 
accidentally quoted Michael Jackson. Yeah, got, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. All right, man. Let's uh, let's take these last few calls and wrap up. We got three more calls left. After that, Dave, no more, no more calls. Um, let's go to let's go to three oh five, man. This looks like a new caller. Amari from Miami, he wants to talk about the future of the Knicks. Amari, how you feeling, bro? Yeah, you are not alone. Yeah, put, yo, put, put your, put up, your yo? TV on mute, bro. Hello? You. All right. I don't know, man. I think he put his whole phone on mute, Jails. What happened to Amari, bro? I don't know. He sounded kind of hyped to be on the phone, oh, my man. Fault. I'm sorry. You hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I was, uh, like uh, the last two uh, callers said, man. I don't think we should go too hard on Frank. But I- ah, ah, man, Amari, man, you missed your debut, oh, your hey, debut, hey. man. Wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. Amari, are you, st- are you still there? Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, man. Go ahead. You guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So like yeah like just being the garden and being a mecca of basketball bro it's, it's just not enough anymore to attract free agents like we need to start building and the same thing with that the nets were doing like building around certain players and creating that core mm-hmm. right now we're creating that core it's people like Frank Lakina and uh even Dotson like they might not have a place for us in the future we need to start picking players that are going to attract like free agents something that they could play with and I feel like getting somebody like Randall and Martin Morris, like that's a strong big man court. And now we brought two guards in. Uh, we got Iggy, maybe RJ. We got we got Isozo, maybe. But I feel like just to just to sit here and give these people chances, if they're not ready, they need to just go because it's time to start. I feel like it's time to start building around players and creating an environment like a winning environment, like you said. We got the coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, mm-hmm. he didn't play Frank that much last year. It seems like he plays people who are ready to play, who are ready to get out there. And I feel like right now we got the core mm-hmm. to start something. But people like Frank, uh, Dotson. Uh, I think we lost him. All right. We got, we got his points. We got his points, Shales. Yeah. Um, only thing I would say on the Frank thing is, like, I just feel like at this point – if you're only going to get a second round pick for him, I don't know. What do you think, Jalen? Would you just, would you just give him, give him, I don't think, I don't necessarily want to just give him away. You know what I mean? We, 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 his value isn't that high right now. That's what I'm saying. And, and now, like, now with more guards here, and it seems like the priority is changing to try to even get more wins, it's going to be harder to get value from him because he's not going to have the opportunity to get any playing time. So I don't see a scenario where we get, anything more than a second round pick for him. Right. Yeah. I mean, maybe we just look at it as, you know what? Maybe he's just going to be a late bloomer. Maybe it's just not his time. We'll go with Alfred for the year. Let this kid keep working in the background. And, and hey, maybe 2021 he, he, he comes out with something good. I don't maybe. know. Because at this point, it's like, I don't see it really worth just giving him away. I know some of you guys are like just so tired of him. I know my man Carl had it. You know, Carl, we, <laughs> we might have lost Carl with that comment, but, you know, I, I just think just continue to keep him and, and keep coaching him up and see what you can get. Yeah. All right, two more calls, Jay. LSJ from East New York. He wants he wants to defend Frank. All right, Jay, what's going on, bro? Wow, this is a crazy night. Crazy night. Hey, what's, what's going on, CP? What's going on, Jay? Like, Tune. Listen, man, Frank has value, Okay. He can defend multiple positions. Mm-hmm. The only thing he really needs to work on is that shot and finding his place in the offense. Now that we've got some more guys that can, you know, play some more better basketball, they, they've been in the league. Like, he has value in, in the right setting. Like, and he's been injured. Like, they, these, these guys, these talking heads, they want to say, oh, Frank ain't this, he ain't that. Like, he hasn't had a solid season where he's healthy and playing a, a specific role, you know? Like, he's going to have to generate some type of value, so you got to give him minutes. So we got to play him. You know what I'm saying? We just got to, like, believe in the kid, let him – you know what I'm saying? Let him – Yeah, but, Jay, where, the problem is, Jay, where are you playing like, him? Like, where are you him? playing him right now? We just gave you the depth chart. Where are you playing him right now where he's going to get minutes? 
Honestly, I, I don't have an answer because I'm, look, I'm I'm looking and I'm like, I like Dennis Smith for ISO off the bench. You know, if Alfred Payton is going to start and RJ is going to play the two, so I don't really see where exactly he can get minutes. But if he got that dog in him, like you said, his next man up, you never know what happens in training camp. Right now, isn't he over there overseas playing in FIFA? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, Maybe he might come with a chip on his shoulder. He see these guards coming in and they looking like they ready to start. You never know. Like, yeah, the yeah. season is not here yet. It's still the off season. Like, that's true. That's true. Fair point. Fair point, man. We appreciate the call, bro. All right, man. All right. I don't think I. I think this is the most I've heard people defend Frank ever on the show. Yeah, it's been pretty mixed. It's been pretty mixed. We've had, you know, two guys say, you know, f- forget about him. Yeah. And then we had a couple guys, Jay, um, say keep. I, I just say, instead of just, di- you know, ditching him for nothing, because that that's also like a Nick thing to do, right? Giving away giving away our guys way yeah. too young. And then and he then, turns into Trevor Reason. Yeah, then he turns into Trevor Reason with the championship, you know, yeah. for, for, <laughs> with Zion on the Pelicans in 2025. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so I would say if he's not going to play, keep him in and just continue to develop him and, and see how it goes. And like Jay, listen, Jay's right. You never know what can shake out in training camp. You know, you don't want to wish injuries on nobody, but you just never know. Sometimes guys think you know, things find a way of shaking out. Yeah, man, if one guard gets injured, all of a sudden there's a shot. All of a sudden yeah, there's a shot. So, yeah, I would say don't don't give up on him so soon. But he's going to have to earn his way if he wants some minutes with, with what we're looking at right now. Okay, last call of the night. James wants to talk about the expectations for the season. All right, James, this, the pressure is on. Shot clock is at 24. It's a tie game, man. You got to close this out properly, man. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm a transplant from the Bronx to Texas right now. Okay. My next badly, especially when that that – Porzingis trade went down and all of Dallas went crazy over here. I was, man, I was homesick. But, man, I'm just excited to say that, that all this talent has come. I did not know about this guy, Iggy, and I love this dude already. I'm mm-hmm. like his number one fan. Him, Mitch, Knox looks like he's finding his shot. So I, I'm really feeling that. And um, RJ looks like he, he settled down a little bit the last two games, so I'm excited about that. looks like if he just works on his post game and facilitating and let his shot come within the next few years, he's going to be crazy. He's going he's gonna to take Madison Square Garden like it's going to be his. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as like Nilakina, look, man, he had his chance. It just, it just might not be meant for him over here. He, he's... He's part of the old regime with um, Jackson. It's, if, if it's time to cut bait, it's time to cut bait with him. And as far as the rest, is keep it going with the youth. And I just I just love watching this team grow. Yeah, I mean, that that's what it's going to be about, man. And appreciate the call, James. Hang, hang tight in there in Dallas and, and continue to support the show. Continue to uh, stick with the community, man. And, and you know, we'll, we'll keep you uh, close to home. From from far away, man. So definitely appreciate it. Um, yo, yeah, I, I agree with James though, JL. So I'm just looking forward to it. This is really the first time we're really seeing a, a commitment to our young guys. You know, we continue to say, it, but we we just haven't seen it. And yeah. in the beginning, you know, I think part of the 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 outrage or the overreactions of, of to RJ in the first two summer league games was, I think it was a result of. You know, the frustration of losing, the frustration of, you know, losing the lottery, frustration of losing, quote unquote, and free agency. And then, you know, having to really face the reality of starting from scratch. But this is this is where we are, man. We're trying to build that core. Like Amari said, we're trying to grow with the youth, like James said. And it's just going to take time, man. We're going to have to build this thing brick by brick and piece by piece. And and it's just going to be no shortcuts to this thing, man. Yeah, man, and the, and the best part about that is too, man. Like we will we'll be more set up for longer term success if we do it that way as well. Yeah, that's just how like, like RJ ends up being great. Then he'll be in really good shape because he already seems like he's so loyal to the New York 
fan base and for the New York in general that if he turns out great and some of the other guys turn out great, we'll be able to sustain the winning in the core for a long, long time out of the Spurs, out of the Golden State Warriors, and we'll be able to keep it going. It'll be dope. Never know, man. No guarantees, but we, we got to start somewhere, man. We gotta, yep. We got to start somewhere, man. So go ahead and close us out, bro. Yeah, man. You know what it is, man. You can follow me on all the social medias. It's the KOT Show on Twitter. Uh, Nick Tan Show on Instagram. Also find me on Facebook. You can also find my show on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Nick Tan Show. It's been very hard. I've been having very little time to upload videos and stuff like that. I usually have the the new uh, pot up already. I'm going to try to have that up as soon as possible. So watch out for that. And you can also listen to the podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, Google Play. Just Google the Nick Tan Show. You'll find me. Back to you, CP. All right. Appreciate you, my dude. And um, salute to everybody for watching, man. We had like over 600 people on YouTube alone. It's, it's 12 a.m. on the East Coast, man. So a lot of Knicks fans, a lot of basketball fans, maybe just people fans of the show. You're all welcome. We appreciate it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button for your boys. You can catch me on my regular channel, Knicks Fan TV on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to that channel. As I said last night, technical difficulties with my live stream, but I'll be back up and running as soon as possible. But we will continue to be live right here on the Nick of Time show on yep. Facebook and on Twitter on Knicks Fan TV as well. So no worries. Catch this show in audio format. If you guys missed it, you guys going to work tomorrow. Catch the show and preview shows and interviews. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Search for Knicks Fan TV. The links are also on my channel as well. And, you, and you'll find those shows in audio format. Uh, share these videos on Twitter. We got some cool Twitter uh, DM groups and Discord groups going on right now. So if you want to continue the conversation after the show, share these videos on Twitter with the hashtag PostGameNYK. And we'll throw you guys in the private Twitter DM groups and Discord group chats. And we can continue the conversation, man. So once again... Before we sign off, remember Saturday at, uh, what is it, 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock, Jails? Saturday at... I think it's 2. Oh, oh no, it's Sunday, Sunday, right? Sunday. Sorry, Sunday at 2 o'clock will be the next show. If the Knicks aren't playing any more Summer League games, the next show will be Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Special guest John Smeal from WFAN 660 out here in New York is going to join us. Talk about Summer League, Knicks offseason, Knicks free agency and everything. Real sharp dude. So that's another guest that we're going to yeah. add to the rotation. So make sure you guys um, tune in for that. And yeah, man. That's it, JL. So let's, uh, let's shout out some people before we get out of here, man. Um, shout out TM, all the mods, TM, Dave, Stafford Don, bless up, Keith Sinclair, appreciate it. All the new callers. We had a ton of new callers, a ton of new viewers. So definitely appreciate uh, the support from the fan base, wherever you guys are watching from as well, man. Um, JL, so who do you, who do you want to shout out? Yeah, yeah, shout out. Billy, shout out to the moms. Uh, hey, Paul, Craig Williams is going on, man. I see you. Uh, Cody, all you guys. Ty B, Jimmy, Anthony Parasol, Frank White Robinson. Shout out to you fellas, man. Nick's Tape, Shay Garcia, Stephen Perez. Shout out to everyone. Yes, sir, man. So, uh, Che Garcia, it's all good, man. Been a minute. Don't worry, man. It's just catch up. And, uh, yeah, we will we'll see you guys again Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Special guest John Schmiel from WFN 660. And uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in once again. Knicks win, 117.96. Nice games from RJ, Mitch, and Knox, and Iggy. Nice game from nice, nice game for those guys, man. So uh, leave a comment in this video. Let us know what you guys thought about the games, and uh, check you guys next time, man. Peace.